Larry, I resign from the Waterhouse account. <laughs> you, you resign? And just to prove that I have had it, I'm going to blow this account. You hear me? I'm going to blow the account. Look, I'll have to make this fast. Mr. Waterhouse is outside. But before you meet him, I want to brief you on a few of the I don't need any briefing, Larry. Dan, Waterhouse is a very conservative man. He's been making thumbtacks since 1888, and he doesn't go for this modern hoopla. I don't know why he decided to change agencies and come with us. But take a tip from me and play it sincere and conservative. Uh-huh. Well, if it isn't old J.P. Waterhouse, thumbtack king of America. Stevens is my name and advertising is my game. Lay it on me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All levity aside, Porterhouse, now I've been looking at your advertising and believe me, some of your ideas went out with hoop skirts. <laughs> now, what Derek means, Mr. Waterhouse, is that... Uh, some of your ideas could be brought into better focus. Oh, no, if you... no, Larry, Larry, that isn't what I mean at all. What I mean is water hose, baby. You've got to get with it. <laughs> That's <laughs> enough, Darren. Oh, <laughs> take, I'll talk to this boy. Young man, you might as well know it now. I don't like you. I don't like your manner. I don't like your style. I don't like your attitude. <laughs> but I do like your ideas. <laughs> Stevens, I'm putting next year's entire campaign in your hands. You are. <laughs> We've been advertising the same way for 30 years. It's not working anymore. That's why I changed agencies, decided we have to keep things up to date. Get to work on that campaign right away. And uh, remember one thing, gentlemen. Waterhouse is my name, and thumbtacks is my game. <laughs> I had a dream of starting my own business and loved the advertising agency business. In 1937, I was making a good living selling radio for WCKY, but I finally got fed up when the sales manager cut my commissions because I was making more money than he was. Even though it was during the Great Depression, I decided to take the risk and make my dream a reality. I'm really proud of my oldest son, Earl, winning this award. It doesn't surprise me. He had the drive and passion to help clients build their business with creative marketing solutions. I was really grateful Earl was interested in the advertising business because I needed help. In addition to all my advertising clients, I was launching a new marketing initiative, Firefighters. Firefighters was the nation's first fire safety public service program. It was designed to teach fire prevention and good citizenship through dramatized stories of real fires. I came up with the name Firefighters. At the time, professionals fighting fires were known as firemen. I hear they still use the term firefighters today. We wrote and directed 140 shows and had these produced in New York City by NBC Studios. It starred some of the leading network personalities of the day. One of Earl's responsibilities was to sell the program. He was persistent and successful. Firefighters was soon syndicated in over 225 markets in the United States and Canada. Take a listen. Presenting Firefighters, the true-to-life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the Demon of Fire. He's up there. This is Chief Cody. Uh, oh, sorry, sir. I had my hands on that pillow. I was trying to see who he was. Never mind that now, Collins. We've got to calm these people down. Yes, sir. Now get up on that stage. Tell them there's no danger before they hurt themselves jamming the exit. Yes, sir. I'm on my way. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no fire. There is no cause for alarm. You have been the victims of a practical joke. I guarantee that we will track down and prosecute to the limit of the law the perpetrator of this wicked, 
true practical joke. Let's go, firefighters! Barney Houston, the fire chief of Cincinnati for over 40 years, wrote a letter to Earl saying, I believe that you, as the producer of firefighters and its related activities, will be interested in knowing that the false alarms over the past year have been cut better than 20%. This most gratifying decrease in this serious offense is due, in my opinion, to the firefighters' show and its teachings. The firefighters' inspectors have also noticed that the homes wherein there are junior firefighters are definitely cleaner and safer through the removal of common fire hazards. I look forward to the day when you'll have developed the Firefighters Brigade into a nationwide institution, with hundreds of thousands of our boys and girls pledged to fire safety. I believe fire chiefs everywhere feel as I do, that this day cannot come too soon. Firefighters was an original program at the time. However, when television was invented, the show lost its luster, became harder to sell, and less profitable. At this time, it was Earl's strategic business decision to refocus our company's energy into the advertising agency business. Earl was fortunate to work with other Cincinnati advertising legends in Cincinnati, such as Ruth Lyons, Bob Braun, and Uncle Al. Working together enabled him to achieve success for his clients, as well as for Holland Advertising. Earl was an idea man and was able to recognize good ones that produced results for his clients. Earl and his team continued to be just as passionate about delivering original and creative ideas for his clients as I did when I started the business. Here are a few memorable and award-winning campaigns. The holidays are here. It's the merriest time of the year. Everybody is happy just being together to toast the new year. Need money for your holiday list. We'll solve your problems. Get ready, cash, convenient. So easy for you. Just pick up the phone and call. And now we take you to Munich, Germany, for a message from Mr. Günther Knackstedt. Solange Sie nicht bei Hockenfühl gewesen sind, können Sie nicht sagen, dass Sie das beste Geschäft gemacht haben. And now we take you to Bombay, India, for a message from Mrs. Minna Ribello. At Rockenfield, me Aneta Kapko Faidana Malum Hoge. And now we take you to the country of Jordan for a message from Mr. Nabil Elisa. Litahuza ala sapkatin kama turid amel mahal al ustaz Rockenfield. Even the kids know the difference. Yum, 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 husband's potato chips. Try some, some husband's potato chips. Do it today. When the chips are down, be sure they're husband's, husband's potato chips. When the chips are down, be sure they're husband's, husband's potato chips. The perfect chip for a snack or a dip. A perfect treat, really good to eat. So when the chips are down, be sure they're husband's, husband's potato chips. Break a glass, call Andy's Glass. For broken glass, see Andy's Glass. For faster service on broken glass, call, call Andy's, Andy's right away. Two years ago, the new Stouffer's Cincinnati Towers started up, branched out, added on, updated, renovated, rejuvenated, created plush new facilities for whining and dining, meeting and convening. Stouffer's Towers, a sparkling new landmark on the Cincinnati skyline, crowned with a revolving restaurant. Stouffer's Cincinnati Towers, 141 West 6th Street. Nobody does it better.
Some people claim they have the highest rates around on savings programs. At Madison Building Association, we know that's for the birds. After all, interest rates are regulated. And at Madison, you'll learn the highest rates permissible in accordance with these regulations. And we're friendly folks at Madison, ready to help you whenever you need financial advice. Home mortgage loans, too, are available at Madison Building Association, an equal housing lender. Kenwood and Grossback. There's magic in money at Additional creative and successful campaigns included First Financial Savings Bank, Covington Trust Bank, Hershey Jewelers, Beverly Hills Supper Club, Bryant Heating and Air Conditioning, Klein on Vine, York Optical, Natorps, Nadler's, Bow Wheel North American Van Lines, Dorsal Flower, International Harvester, Klosterman Baking Company, Schuler's Wigwam, and others. In fact, my first client back in 1937 was Jack Marmer, owner of Marmer's Shoe Stores. Earl continued the relationship, becoming good friends with his son, Saul, and this account was with us for over 50 years. Hear what others have to say about Earl. Earl was hands-on. He was the best boss I ever had. Dedicated. Earl Holland was dedicated. Passionate. Hardworking. Honest. He was a listener. He didn't come in with the uh, entourage of a half a dozen people, sit you down at a table and say, this is what you need. He would uh, come in with the approach of, what do you need? He respected us. He looked at us as a, uh, as a media partner. And uh, I always appreciated that. And consequently, I worked really hard for your dad. What I appreciated about Earl Holland was his work ethic. I mean, he was totally dedicated to his clients all the time. And he really expected and demanded the same thing from the TV account executives and radio account executives. He had a passion for his customers, um, and he had a passion for everything he did. And that passion it was more than passion. It was a perfectionism, that everything that he did needed to be perfect, and he needed to do everything the right way. Um, and that's important in, uh, in his business. If you go to any of his uh, clients, they'll tell you uh, that he was a friend, not a salesman. And I think that made a big difference. Well, he did the job. He kind of uh, was almost like a Wizard of Oz. Earl expected a lot from his employees. But he treated us very fairly and, 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 and with dignity. You know, when I would come to the Holland Agency, Ruth Holland would always be there and she would be warm and welcoming with a big smile on her face. And then you would walk into Earl's office and you would go, oh my gosh. Because Earl was very intimidating, at least I thought so. But after a while, you got to know Earl and you understood that he was trying to do special things for his clients and get above and beyond. And then you began to work with him and understand how you could help him. Earl was kind of intimidating. I mean, here was a man who was a legend in Cincinnati. Um, he had a, a, just a terrific, stellar reputation. My father did business with Mr. William Holland. I did business with Mr. Earl Holland, and now my children and Tom Hess, our VP of sales, is doing business with Mark and Brian Holland. And I think that's kind of a unique Cincinnati story, how businesses are passed down from generation to generation. Earl Holland, it sounds to me like a mensch. You know a mensch when you see it. A mensch could be, say, a kid that started as a Boy Scout, as a tenderfoot, ended up as a young man, and a uh, maybe an Eagle Scout or a Rotarian that puts service in front, in front of himself or a uh, devoted husband and father catered to his kids and his wife all through his life. He was not just and won't, won't always just be remembered for being an, uh, an icon in advertising. He will be remembered for the years of public service that he gave back to this community in Rotary, Rotary the, 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 Syrian Temple, um, just uh, all of the organizations that he gave to. He gave of himself, he gave of his talent, his resources, and I think a lot of people are better off in this community because of Earl Holland. One of the most important things that he realized early on was the importance of having a team that thought and worked with the same values 
that he had for the client. The Holland Agency over the years came up with some of the best creative ever. And if you grew up in Cincinnati, you of course you, 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 you grew up with husband's potato chips. And who can forget the jingle, and pardon me Earl for, for uh, hatcheting this jingle, but who can forget if the chips are down, make sure they're Hussman's, Hussman's potato chips. And that one jingle just personified the creativity of the Holland Agency over the years. It's something that has stuck with me and I'm sure thousands of Cincinnatians for 30, 40 years. I'm sure he's very proud of the work that you and that, that, that Mark and Brian Holland are doing today. Probably the greatest tribute one man can pay to another. He was a man. A good man. Oh, Earl was a legend. <laughs> Never in my wildest dreams would I have dreamed my two grandsons, Mark and Brian, and my great-granddaughter, Lauren, would love the business I started over 75 years ago. Today, we are the third oldest family-owned ad agency in the United States. Quite an accomplishment since less than 10% of family businesses ever make it to the third generation. Mark and Brian... Thank you for embracing my mission for the business. You are delivering fresh ideas and greater ROI for your clients. May Earl's and my legacy live on.